My name is Melissa Avera, and I love being a realtor. I specialize in real estate in the DFW and surrounding areas, and I also grew up here, so I'm very familiar with the Metroplex. Buying or selling a home can be an extremely stressful task, so I really try to go the extra mile to take that stress out of my clients' hands. This is Going the Extra Mile. Now, from Free Donation Productions in the Cato Office Reimagined Studios, here's Melissa. Thanks, Chris. Today, I would like to share with you guys a lot of questions that I am getting personally from my clients, my friends, my network. After doing a little bit of research, I found out that there are some of the most Googled questions about the real estate market right now. So I just thought it would be valuable to provide some information and give you a little bit more insight. The first one is, are we in a bubble, a real estate bubble? Or when is the market going to crash? What goes up must come down. Yeah. And my direct answer to, are we in a bubble is no, we're not. And the reason is because when everything came crashing down over a decade ago, we had a much, much larger inventory. Uh, Right now, the National Association of Realtors stated that we have about 1.2 million listings nationwide. And when the market crashed before, we had four times that inventory. And there's not a chance that we're going to all of a sudden get back to that kind of inventory right now. That's just, that's not going to (laughs) happen. And the, the two things to me that really create a bubble are very low down payment and adjustable rate mortgages. That can That is a bubble right there. And so just to reiterate why we're not in one is right now everything's fixed. Interest rates are super low. And people are locking in 3.25 rates for 30 years. You know, there's none of this, you know, shady loan stuff going on. Back then, anybody could get a mortgage. I mean, they were just handing them out. They could get one and they couldn't afford one. Right, exactly. Especially and now, once those adjustable rates kicked in and they went from just paying interest only or uh-huh. and their interest rate doubled overnight. Yeah. And that's how people, that's how we get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> and now everything is fixed and it's low. Yeah, so that's, again, flooding buyers to the market, hence the shortage of inventory. Uh, So, you know, I I don't see that this we're in a bubble. A lot of people just keep thinking, like, the market is just going to come crashing down. So I I honestly believe, too, why why is the market so hot? Uh, Well, think about the last year and a half we've lived through, where – We've been on lockdown. People have been scared. People haven't been traveling. People haven't been leaving their homes. Well, now everything's bustling. People are traveling. People have, if they've gotten their vaccine, maybe they're more, you know, comfortable. You see more people out. So people are now welcoming people into their homes again. And so having strangers walk through their home to get it on the market is not a big deal. And the other thing too is so many people after living what we lived through, they realize one, I either need more space because I'm working at home or from home indefinitely. My kids are a lot of, a lot of my friends' kids are totally just e-learning or doing it online now instead of going to school. So they need a place to learn. And especially if both spouses are home. So it's like you have all these people home. And then the other thing is people haven't been able to travel. And so they want their home to feel like an oasis. So you're seeing the nicer, more expensive homes, especially ones with pools and kind of that tropical atmosphere. They're going so fast. Well, that's also what differentiates this market from the the bubble that popped in the mid to late 2000s. Yeah. Um, is it, it strikes me that the people that are buying right now are very highly qualified. Absolutely. They are. And that, that's the other thing why we're not in a bubble is because there is more, like I said before, a bubble creates, there's normally very low down payment. There is more cash in our market right now than there has ever been probably in history. I mean, down payments are 
high. I mean, people are putting double down what is necessary, you know, well, one to like win deals, but uh, there's just so much cash in the market. So that takes the concern out of, you know, putting minimum down and people mm-hmm. not being able to afford. And the other, the other thing is like so many people are moving that even like the rental market has had a huge shift. So it's not just people trying to sell their house or buy a new house where it's all competitive. The rental market is that way because a lot of people are selling to take advantage of the market, which is smart. And then they're going and renting for a year or trying to like wait it out. Mm -hmm. Right. If whatever we're in, but trying to time the market, right. They are. And, and that's smart. You want to try to time the market. I mean, it's, my advice would always be to sell when it is hot and line that bank account. I mean, mm-hmm. you the number one ticket to wealth is investing in real estate. You're building the equity. And even now with people having to pay so far over, in some cases, over asking price to win the deal, people worry about the equity. But with all the cash in the market and what people are putting down – they're not I've had people recently who've had to go eighty thousand over to win a deal, and you just shake your head and you think, "Oh my god, this is not this is not ideal. This is not what I would want any of my clients to do. Some of them already have equity. Wow, it's unbelievable. like I would have never thought, but it just keep it just keeps continuing see because a situation increase. like that, I don't mind paying for what I want. But I walk in, like when I got my pool, I knew that I was not going to make my money back on the pool, but I wanted the pool. So I didn't put a pool in for an investment. Right. I put it into use. Right now in this market, if there's a house I want, I'm not looking at it as an investment, but you just kind of open my eyes a little bit. People that are paying that much over are still getting equity. They are. I mean, wow. not everybody. It depends on where you buy. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, there's different parts of the Metroplex that are a little bit more competitive and hotter, per se. But, I mean, e- even at those, I mean, just from the last five months, the, the market has just changed so much in the last year. But it is evolving. Literally, there are changes every week that I notice happening. And it's it's mind-blowing. So you have to just constantly educate your clients because buying a house today can be it could be very different for two months from now or two months prior to what is necessary to you know get under contract or the appropriate steps to take when you're selling your house or certain things maybe you need to do but in this market it's like people just put their homes on the market they're like why do repairs why do anything I was going to ask going to sell okay. <laughs> Because we brought that up with Emily, yeah, um, your broker. Yeah. If I'm selling a house right now, do I need to stage it? Do I need to fix the dripping sink? I mean, things like that. If you can fix it, sure. It's not going to hurt. I, I always say first impressions, I mean, they're lasting. You know, so when I do picture professional photography of my listings, I, I always want them to look exactly like what the house looks like when the people get there. So I want them to fall in love with the pictures online and then they get there and it just solidifies, wow, this is exactly what I want. There's so many times where people Photoshop the crap out of pictures yeah. and they fall in love with it online. Then you get there and it's like, wow, this Kinda is like so disappointing. Dis- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry. It's so disappointing. <laughs> but uh, to answer your question, if are repairs really necessary? Right now, no, they're not. Uh, I'm getting a lot of people selling their home as is. You know, a year or two ago, you know, if flooring was ratty or something, people would be like, okay, maybe I'll throw a cup, coat of paint on, replace some floors. Not that hard. And they would they would get their return on it. Right now, they're getting the return whether they do it or not. Mm-hmm. So I, I would say no, don't, don't put a lot of money – into it if you're wanting to sell because you're you're gonna get a good deal and you're probably gonna be multiple offer i haven't had a deal in the last year at least that hasn't been multi-offer and normally they're all at least at asking price people aren't typically lowballing you what kind of ratios are from people moving 
from out of state or out of market into here or people that are just moving within the market? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, there's a lot of people moving here. If you look at the really, really high tax states like California and New York, I mean, they're just raked over the coals mm -hmm. with taxes. It's unreal. And I have seen a major shift in the amount of people relocating to just the DFW area from those states. I mean, they seem to be coming in droves. I mean, a lot of the companies, you know, corporate corporate companies are relocating here, Frisco, mm -hmm. a, you know, a lot of them. And that's been going on for several years now. But it just seems to be – I'm getting more just individuals because especially California, they – during COVID, it was just a joke there. I mean, these people couldn't do anything. <laughs> they just – businesses stopped, you know, and people want to move here so they can actually get on with life and make money. If it's not as already as expensive as hell to live out there mm -hmm. and now they can't do anything to really produce the income that they were because they can't go anywhere. They're coming to one less restricted States and then States that don't have the state income tax and a lot of the other things. And you know, businesses are saving a ton of money yeah. coming here. But that's also a driving force in the market because you have all of these people coming from these more expensive states where real estate, I mean, let's face it, real estate in L.A. is a hell of a lot more expensive than it is here. And you're getting way nicer homes typically here and a lot larger. People are mind blown when they sell their – I always laugh. I'll say they sell their shack in L.A. for $1.5 and then they can come here and buy a half a million dollar home in cash that's a mansion yeah. compared to what they had. And they're laughing, lying in their bank account. Makes me wish I would have grown up in California. No joke. <laughs> and it makes me wonder how they afforded the house in California. I know. Um, so there's but, a lot of that right now. And I think um, over the past year, you know, my focus group of one, lifestyles, priorities, and occupations change. And, uh, you know, when you realize, well, when the world realizes – they don't necessarily need to go to an office right. to work. You've got the freedom to work virtually, work from home. You're willing to move. And I've had people distance. locally do that. Um, several friends of mine, actually, who they they always were very dedicated to a certain area. Like I never thought they'd leave the Plano bubble or yeah. wherever, you know, University Park or wherever they live. And now – after living through the last year and a half, it's like, wow, you know, I, I want a house with some space or I want some land. I, I don't want to be right on top of everybody. I want to be able to do my own thing and have some privacy. And I have more people who have gone from shockingly like condos in Dallas or high rises to an acre in Anna or Melissa or going further. Talk about some culture north. shock. Exactly. You know, but they love it. And it's the same thing. Like now their kids are e-learning, so they don't have to be 10 minutes away from school because mm -hmm. they're not commuting and they're not driving to downtown Dallas now. And a, a lot of them, you know, as things have reopened, they're allowing people to, a lot of people are still having to go back to work, but most of my clients are giving them the option. And if they've moved an hour away from where their office is, they're like, just, you're well, clearly productive. Places even if you do have to go back to work, it's two days a week or three days a week. Right. It's been adjusted a little bit. Yeah. And that's probably going to stick for a lot of companies. I think so. And well, it just probably isn't the best thing for a lot of commercial real estate yeah. when you think about it, you know, because a lot of these corporations are huge headquarters and now they're just sitting there empty, you know, so that that's not super ideal. Might be a great time to invest in certain types of, <laughs> yeah. Uh, commercial real estate. But um, yeah, it, it's amazing to see and how, to see how people operate and what this last year has brought just to the real estate market. I, I mean, I was reading something a while back about, you know, all these people talking about the housing market, thinking it's going to crash. And in my mind, I'm just thinking real estate is the new toilet paper. <laughs> I mean, and it is. I mean, this this market right now is 
it's I've never seen anything like it. And I don't think a lot of people have. Let me try this on you. As far as it crashing, I don't think this is going to cause a crash, but I think it could cause a slowdown and maybe some more inventory. Is people that took advantage of not paying their mortgage. Yeah. The mortgage forbearances and stuff that for the last umpteen months have not paid their mortgage because they were allowed some forgiveness. Uh huh. And now they have to start paying it again. Those people may jump back into the market and say, look, now's a good time for me to sell. Yes. Because now I have to start paying again. And not that they're getting behind or anything. Right. And, and you may see a, a fair amount of, you know, a lot of people think, oh, there's going to be a ton of foreclosures or short sales. And I mean, that's a whole different ball game. I don't think we're going to see. Yeah, I'm a not lot even talking that, about short sales. I'm talking yeah. about people that realize, okay, I've got some equity. Um, I'm not selling short, but I don't want to pay this mortgage payment. Yeah. So I'll go pay it in rent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that whole situation is. <sighs> It's just kind of a bad, bad deal. I mean, always, to me, if you own a house, the number one bill you should always pay at minimum is your mortgage. Oh, I mean, not your, not your internet or your satellite TV? Right. Like, those are luxuries. I mean, even though we all need them nowadays, right, mm-hmm. to function properly, but having a roof over your head, to me, is the most important thing. Cable, internet, TV, all that stuff comes Second, we've just been so spoiled and conditioned where we think we just, that's, it's a necessity nowadays for most people instead of a luxury. Yeah. Yeah. So it just, it makes you step back. Some of these people need to reassess what's, what's truly a necessity versus luxury. So the other thing that I touched on briefly was the rental market and a lot of people, again, selling their home and then trying to just figure out. You know, they're they have making so much money off the sell, so it's like they can afford to go rent somewhere for even a year and still making money, right? And a lot of those people are trying to build or, you know, just figure out what they're going to do. But because of that, the rental market has gotten pretty nuts. Also, which that kind of, you know, that really blows my mind. The fact that I have had clients who have had to, you know, normally, if a house is listed for two grand a month, that's what you pay. <laughs> You're not saying, "I'll give you twenty three fifty, but in some cases, that's what it's come to because they'll have twenty applicants on one house again, I mean area matters, right I mean the, a lot of times the further out if you are in the sticks, it's probably not as a desirable area, but um that, that's really been eye-opening to, I think, a lot of people. As someone who had moved out of a home ownership situation into an apartment rental, me, I can tell you this. There are plenty of short-term, day-to-day things I love about not having to mow my lawn, um, not having to worry about my water heater bursting and paying for that repair. There's a lot of things that are great short-term mm-hmm. about being in the apartment. But what I'm starting, once again, my focus group of one, what I'm starting to worry about is when I have the house and I'm locked into a mortgage rate, I know what my housing payment's going to be right. each and every month. Well, now I'm at the mercy of every year my apartment complex, or if I'm renting a house, the market dictating, well, your rent's going to go up. Exactly. And that's not a fun place to be. No. It's not. And I'm seeing too, a lot of people are, are people are getting greedy and they're, they see the competition with even the rental market. So I'll see a house listed for 1850 and then three days later they have it at like 2200. Really? I mean, that big of a jump because there's that much interest. I mean, but the thing is somebody's willing to pay it. You know, I mean, I have a rental property myself and you know, I mean, you, you rent things at fair market value, but if you want to keep, you want to keep good tenants, you want to keep people happy. So you need to be reasonable. I mean, of course, m- normally every year you can expect some kind of increase because the property taxes go up, costs go up, but for a huge jump like that, that's, that's just ridiculous. And again, that that's why you got to have somebody in your corner going to bat for you because, 
you don't want to overpay for something that you are not going to have any equity in. And that's the only thing when I talk to a, a lot of younger people too, you know, they're, they're out of school. The first thing is like, oh, I need to get an apartment. You know, they get an apartment and I have some clients now and they told me just the other day they were paying $2,200 for like a three bedroom, two bathroom apartment. That's, it's really not that nice. <laughs> And I thought 20, you know, that much money, you could have a house. You're just throwing that away every month. And they've done it for years. And now they're finally realizing like, okay, God, now I have a kid. I don't want to be in an apartment. I want to be in a house. And why have I not done this? I mean, even if you buy in this crazy market right now, when, yeah, you might have to overpay, 10 years from now, I mean, just the, the trend seems to be where every year you're, it, it's just a, a, it ebbs and flows, but over the course of a decade or two, you're going to have equity. You're going to build wealth. And I mean, that is what I think so many people don't understand is I truly believe one of the quickest ways to set yourself up for future, for retirement and to have any kind of wealth is to invest in real estate. Yeah, they're, they're buy land, right? They don't make it anymore. They're, they're, it anymore yeah. they're, you know, there's not much land to build on. Or find a good poker game. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, that, no just makes, that just makes sense, though. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What has it been like living in an apartment through COVID? Were there obstacles well, like, unfortunately I lived in a hospital for a lot of covid well um, yes unfortunately didn't have covid did. though um <laughs> i'll tell you what very seriously short term like i said there's been a lot of good things about living in the apartment and quite frankly i saved a lot of money living in the apartment not because of the the rent the rent in my apartment's almost as much as my mortgage was but the utilities mm -hmm. and the upkeep just aren't there you don't have to right. pay that but it is a um, small apartment, which has some benefits. It's easy to clean. Very, 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 very extremely easy to clean. Um, it's not as easy to have a dog. It's not as easy to host things at your apartment. But you don't strike me as the kind of guy who needs a bunch of stuff. You, you just, you know, you can, you could, I could see you I being a minimalist. I, I wish I could be. I love the idea of being a minimal, but... Okay. I'm not. I mean, I've got a, a one bedroom apartment. I've got three big screen TVs. <laughs> well, that's priorities, right? Yeah, I mean, that's right. I've got three big screen TVs. And, <laughs> what else does a guy and need? Two computers and um, and a bed. Whole sound system. <laughs> right. I don't have a headboard. Um, <laughs> but there's there's a lot of good things I could say about it. But there's a lot. I mean, fortunately, I'm on the fourth floor, which is the top floor of my apartments. I don't have to deal with neighbors above me. Yeah. But I do have to deal with noise. And it's not huge noise, but you can hear. Yeah, side to side. Yeah, you know, side to side when they're especially when they're hanging pictures. <laughs> um, stuff like that. You can hear um when their kids crying. Yeah. Things like that. If their dog barks. I think for I, certain people it definitely makes sense. I mean, sometimes an apartment absolutely makes sense for somebody's situation. And that's what I try to help people. Decide. I've had a lot of people who they decided to jump on the bandwagon and sell because they knew they wanted to take advantage of the market, but they didn't want to commit to renting a house for a year and overpaying. So like, I'm just going to go to an apartment six months and we'll reassess at that point. And for some people, that is the smartest thing to do. Well, here's my advice to people. And this is just very unprofessional advice. <laughs> but if you're going to take advantage of the market... And say you're an empty nester, you don't have to worry about school districts, you don't have to worry about kids, and you have a house, sell the house with the intentions of you're going to buy another house in a year, a year and a half, and then go get a badass apartment. But know that you're just going to live there for a year. Yeah. And live that life because it's, I think I got, I'm ready to buy a house. I'm not ready to buy a house in this market. Right. But I'm ready to, to get into a house and... And it wasn't just COVID related, but I think about the at the ten month mark, mm -hmm. I was 
It's hard to make that shift. I mean, once you've lived in a house, then to have to go to an apartment, it's it's kind of a shock. I mean, it's either like the massive downsize or just right the the noise of other people. It's kind of an inconvenience. Uh, You know, so it's interesting just hearing your perspective. And and right now, really, honestly, my my biggest concern is when the apartment complex gives me my next lease offer. Mm -hmm. Um, Am I going to take it or am I going to move? Right. Because I'm at the mercy of whatever they think the market is. Right. And they'll let you go month to month, but you'll have to pay for it. Oh, my gosh, yes. You will have to pay for it. It is crazy. (laughs) Um, Even if you want six months, Mm -hmm. the difference is crazy. And they know that I'm too lazy to move. Most people, you know, don't like moving. Right. Um, that's just the whole process. They know the moving costs. It's expensive. Um, and so they they pretty much have a good idea of what what the limit is. Uh huh. And they'll get you right up to that limit to where you say, eh, it's just not worth it to move. Exactly. Unless yeah. I'm moving into a house, unless I'm changing my life. Yeah, because like, what's it going to cost you to move, buy all new stuff, hire movers? I don't know. Some people that might be. $1,200. Normally it's more than that, but do you think that's a hundred bucks more in rent every month? Mm-hmm. And most people would weigh it as, yeah, I can afford a hundred bucks a month. I'm not happy about it, but is it worth moving over? And then exactly what you said, a lot of people will just stay. It's kind of like they strong arm you <laughs> into staying. And the shorter the term you sign, the more you're going to Well, and like pay. what you just said too, if you're living... And where I live, I consider it a high-dollar apartment. And quite frankly, there's a neighborhood that is almost finished being built, literally right in my backyard, that has 2,500 to 3,500 square foot homes that I could get for the mortgage would be just about what my rent is for my one-bedroom apartment. I know. Doesn't that, it just makes me sick to my stomach sometimes um, to think about that. Yeah, but I also <laughs> walk into that with... My eyes open that exactly. the maintenance and the upkeep and do I want to be mowing my lawn? Yeah. Because you can be- spend a fortune. I've had a lot of clients call me in the last week with broken ACs. Yeah. And I mean, now's the time of year when those seem to go out. And I mean, it's not cheap. And people are calling me asking, hey, who do I call? Who do I use? And I think, oh, the, you know, my husband always laughs at me because when stuff like that happens, I say, ah, oh, the joys of home ownership. He's like, it's not a joy. <laughs> It's a burden. Well, it's a this. I think I think I've told you this. Me and my ex-wife, we get in, into this argument all the time about home ownership, and this is probably not something I should be telling a realtor. <laughs> but um, when we sold our house, we still get along and everything. Um, when we sold our house, she looked at me and said, "We made a huge profit on this thing," and I'm like, "No, we didn't." And she said, "Yeah, we did." Now I'll tell you the the good news in a second. But I said, "Sherry," she said. We bought it for one ninety six, and we sold it for three sixty five. Or, and I said, yeah, but we put in a sixty thousand dollar pool. We put in ten thousand dollars for the countertops. We put in a ten thousand dollar fence, and we put a lot of money into it. Now, that's the we didn't make a lot of money on the house. But the good news is, if we didn't spend that money, we would spend somewhere else. Yeah, and we wouldn't have had the equity in the house. We left the house with. A ton of cash in our pockets that if we didn't buy that house, even though I'm right, we didn't make a huge profit. We left it with a lot of money in our pockets. Uh huh. And that, that's a that's a great position to be in. Yeah. Because ideally, what I what I want the position, what position I want all my clients to be in, or to set them up is when they're ready to buy their next house, or if they want to have multiple houses, exactly. if they're more trying to do the investing thing, then they can pull. Say, hey, I got 200 k in equity in this house. I can pull out 50 of it, mm-hmm. and that's my down payment for this other house. And you do that time and time again, and you're going to build an awesome portfolio. That's exactly right. And not only that, we got to live in the house right, for 17 years, and a couple of them were really, really good years. Yeah, and, and enjoy, enjoy the pool, yeah. all the things that people want now. And, you know, that's the other thing I get questioned a lot of people ask. I want a pool. Should I buy a house that has one or should I just buy one and put one in? Nine times out of 10, I would tell people buy one that has one. Really? Why? Because most of the time you're not going to get your return. 
And it's crazy right now because there are so – pool companies are absolutely killing it right now. Yes. <laughs> I mean, there's a sign I feel like in certain neighborhoods, it's every other house right now, honestly, that's getting a pool. Because, again, COVID, right? People want the oasis at their home. They're not – going as many places and but right now you can probably get that return because people are spending 80 to i've had mm. clients spend one hundred fifty thousand putting a pool in and making an amazing backyard and that's a lot of money you know but in if, if you know you're going to be there yeah. and that's the house you want to stay in and raise your kids in go for it yeah do it because to some degree it is what you get out of it you can't put a value on that. Mm-hmm. Memories you'll make, the fun times you'll have. I mean, you can't put a value to it. But if you have any inkling that, hey, I might be moving in 18 months or a few years, but I also want to put in a pool, maybe tap the brakes on doing something like that if you're not sure entirely if you're going to remember stay. when ERCOT <laughs> cut your heat off. Exactly. <laughs> that was just a bad deal all yeah. the way around. Uh. <laughs> cool. This has been fun. It's been a lot of fun. And I hope this helped answer questions. And I, I feel like people, again, with that, all the questions about are we in the bubble, you know, there's just uncertainty in the market. And uh, that that's just my take on it. Uh, so I hope that helps bring a little bit of comfort to people knowing that, yeah, it's competitive to buy right now, but you're, pro- you're, you're going to be okay. It's not like everything is just going to pop and come tumbling down like it did years ago. This is a very different scenario we're in now, again, because of the cash in the market, because of the interest rates and the loan types. Um, You know, it's hard. It's hard to qualify to get a loan now. And they're not making it any easier. I mean, day before that I'm having people try to close on a house, lenders are doing last minute stuff to make sure that they haven't gone and bought a car, you know, spent 10 grand on furniture. And if they have, they're not going to have a house to move into. So it, it, it's, it's definitely not the easiest thing. They're not giving away mortgages now like they were then. (laughs) That's right. If you have questions about buying, selling, renting, or investing, don't go at it alone. Reach out to Melissa at 214-280-4317 or melissa at melissamovesdfw.com. You can find out more about the Melissa Avera Realty Group at TVG by visiting melissamovesdfw.com. Thank you for listening to Going the Extra Mile.